In this video, I'll take you through a simple game plan of how you're going to set up your new Apple Watch and some of the settings you're gonna wanna change first. Let's get into it. Setting up an Apple Watch might feel familiar if you've ever set up an Apple product before, meaning it's a pretty straightforward step-by-step -step experience. The most important thing you'll need is your iPhone nearby as you'll use it a lot during the Apple Watch setup process. If your phone recognizes a new Apple Watch nearby, you'll see a pop-up to initiate the process, but you can also go into the watch app on iPhone and add a new watch here. You have two choices. Most people are going to set up for themselves, but note that you can set up an Apple Watch for a family member if you'd like. Otherwise, you're going to follow the prompts, assign the wrist orientation, agree to some terms and conditions, confirm your Apple Health and Activity Ring settings, set up a passcode, add some payment methods if you'd like. So now your Apple Watch should be syncing with your phone. This would be a good time to run a software update, which you can check for in the general settings in the Watch app. Most new watches coming out of the box are probably an interim watchOS update or two behind, so chances are you'll need to initiate the update. Going forward, you'll either want to enable automatic updates or just update your software regularly to ensure you're getting the best user experience. Before we move on, I'd like to say thanks to the returning viewers who have been following along with my Apple Watch videos on this channel over the years. But also, welcome to those who are here for the first time. This channel is all about helping you make the most of your tech, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a new video. Back to how to set up your Apple Watch, there is a couple of settings I recommend enabling from the jump. First, fall detection doesn't come enabled, so do that. It's a great safety tool, one that you don't hope to need, but you will be glad to have it if you do. Next, if you skip this during setup, Reconsider adding a passcode and payment information. It's still optional, of course, but note that you do need a passcode in order to use Apple Pay on your watch. Next, I'd suggest setting up noise alerts by going to settings, noise, and toggle on environmental sound measurements to enable noise notifications that will alert you if your surroundings are dangerously loud. In a similar vein, you might also wanna set up sleep tracking if you plan to wear your watch to bed. You can use the watch app or health app on iPhone to create a sleep schedule, set up sleep tracking, and if you have an Apple Watch Series 10 or Ultra 2, you can also set up sleep apnea detection. Again, these are all things that won't work unless you proactively enable them. Not saying you need them, but I wanna help you make the most of your watch's features. Taking things a step further, there are some additional settings you can change to make your Apple Watch better suited for your needs. I suggest rearranging your smart stack that's accessed by turning the digital crown. If you press and hold on the screen, you can rearrange the order of which the widgets appear. Another thing to change is your text size. If it's too small, you can do that in settings on your watch or on the watch app on your iPhone in the display and brightness settings. While we're here, make sure you're happy with the app view. You can choose grid view or list view. That's simply based on your preference. One of the biggest complaints I see from new users with Apple Watches is how many notifications you get. Right up top in settings, you'll see notification settings. You can basically go app by app and decide which ones you want notifications for. If you don't mind the notifications but dislike the haptics, you can disable system haptics in sounds and haptics settings. A big one here, if you go into the activity settings, you can change all of the movement-based goals that buzz throughout various points of the day. And just in general, in case you didn't know, you can silence all notifications in one swoop by enabling Do Not Disturb. Press the side button to open the control center to access it. Another thing new Apple Watch users should know is how to make your Apple Watch battery life last longer. There are a few settings you can enable. First is pretty straightforward. It's a low power mode that disables all of the most battery draining features. This is also accessed through the control center. From there, you can further disable additional features such as sleep tracking, automatic app refreshes, the listen for Siri feature, and finally, make sure you are using optimized charging to maintain your Apple Watch's battery health long-term. I hope you either got the answers you were looking for or learned something new from watching this video. I'm thinking I might do a video on the first Apple Watch apps you should download, so let me know in the comments if that's something you'd wanna see. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.